Welcome back to Picture Chain Design. This is PJ. Today we are going to talk about how to create in this figure eight or continue a band type of a ring and how do you uh, manipulate the surface without calculate each the distance of them. There's a quick tip for that. Are you ready? Let's get started. So there are two style that we are looking into today. One, I mean, they both taper, by the way, and one is flat, and the other one is actually curved. And we don't want to build a part by part and sweep over. It will take a lot of the time. Try to figure out a direction for the sweep. So here's what I will do. As starting from the scratch, we are going to use the circle command to creating the ring size. And I always recommend that you do exactly size for the the ring size that you wanted to do discard disregarding the shrinkage on the printing and casting uh, we want to set it up the diameter for 16 for this demonstration but you can set it up for whatever um, that works for you now i'm going to uh, know like how long is this piece is going to be so i'm gonna use the length command and it shows this is 50.265 so we are going to use the command for polyline and we're going to draw exactly the same length and holding my shift and so you can click right here that curve is represented this curve right there all right and so we can kind of design our pattern right here so i'm going to maximum to the top view and depends on how wide do you want it to have on uh, this ring so that's going to set it up for another a straight line and we're gonna use this commands called um, line and from midpoint so i'm going to starting right here and for whatever how long that you want it okay and then we need to do the design right in the middle now in this one i would like to divide them into certain section so depends on how many section that you want so let's say i wanted to have them in the 16 section so I'm going to use the divide command and divide it to the 16 pieces and kind of see if this is the length is what you want or this too jammy or, or if you need to change anything. If it is too jammy, maybe we want to just divide it by 12 or 14. So it's up to you. So let's try 14 on this one. So let's say this is the each of a section of that figure eight that we're going to have. So I'm gonna copy um, this line to somewhere in the middle right there. And also maybe I wanna copy on the side as well. Um, so let me copy another one from here to here. All right, so in the middle, I'm going to use the arc tool and snapping right here and holding my shift and creating some sort of an arc like this and see if it is too big or too small you can always adjust it i'm going to have the same thing um, but want it to be the same uh, distance from onto the bottom so basically i'm going to mirror this guy and just moving um, from this point and to this point with the intersect. All right, so it's kind of uh, off a little bit. Then I'm going to use the blank command. So we're gonna use the blank curve and we're going to blend from here to here. All right, so that gives us a very nice curve right there. So imagine that if we have this curve right here and then we're gonna have something opposite going up there. So I'm going to using the mirror command to creating another piece right there. So then we will have this completed piece, right? And again, you can keep uh, getting copy from this point to this point. All right, so you're kind of getting the idea for what kind of pattern I'm looking for. And I'm actually looking into this section right there. So I'm going to use this one to trim off this guy right here. And it's actually just right in the middle, or you can use the split command and we want to split with the point and then we'll get rid of this part too. All right, so now you got everything. Let's go ahead to join this curve over there and we can kind of uh, uh, sweep around here. So that's coming into the side view and an all four view actually. And we wanted to create a cross section. So I'm going to use the um, round rectangle and with the conic corner, going to snapping into the center of this point right here and now we're coming into the right view to see how big this piece is going to be now you can have a really big really bold looking things but i'm going to have something a little bit smaller 
and holding my shift so then I will have a square instead of a rectangle. All right, and I want them to come in, in a little bit like this. Once you have this one, you just need to make the copy from this point to this point and also the end point. All right, so now let's take a look. We have our rail and we also have the three cross section. Let's give it a try. We want to try sweep one rail command. And this is our rail, this is a cross section, this is a cross section, and this is an end cross section. And you want to make sure they all align and then they're facing the same direction. All right, so if you get something like this, maybe um, you can change the frame style to the roll like and you'll get something more correct. And let's click OK. Now we have this piece. Notice that you see this is a darker light there. And that is because where it is the seam uh, for our piece. Let me moving this on the side for your uh, comparison. This is, it was a joint section altogether. And that's where the joint point. And then you got this uh, surface that has a seam on it, right? If you do not want it to have any of the seam on it, this is what you wanted to do. Let's rebuild this guy. And currently the point is 19 there. So we are going to change to something like 20 over there. And you want to take a look if deviation is too much. And if it is, you can bump up the number. Uh, I would like to keep it as uh, even uh, odd number because we have 19, now we want 21. And I also want a degree to be a degree three. And we want to click OK there. All right, so now we have this piece. Let me sweep one more time. We're going to use the sweep one rail and we're gonna click on here, cross section one, two, and three. And then we hit enter, then we'll get something like that. Notice that this piece has no seam on it, right? Uh, at the render, they all look the same. There's no difference from that, but I prefer the second one is because it's always easier later on if you wanna edit and then you will have a less problem uh, for less seam, all right? So now we have this one and we just need to create a bunch of them. Uh, I'm going to using those points and make a bunch of a copy. So this surface is going to be copy to those point. And you just need to snap in into the point to be connected perfectly. All right. And we got one there. All right, notice the one on the top right here, it will end it there and then they will uh, connect it together. So let's go ahead to join them. Now they become one piece and it is a time for us to see how we are going to flow it into the ring. First of all, um, if you just flow it this with the flow command, which is flow along the curve, and then you pick up this object and you pick up this curve and you pick up here, then you pretty much will get this wire things right here. It's not changing at all. Um, you know, make make it taper or the thickness or whatsoever. But I want to move in this guy to the side for the comparison. Now I would like to do is to create something taper uh, uh, from the top to the bottom of the ring chain. So I need to creating a surface. So let me go ahead to using the line tool for from the midpoint. And I'm going to snapping into the quadrant right here, roughly about this Y. And another one on the bottom, roughly about this Y. And then that's coming into the perspective. Now in the perspective, I need to creating a surface. So we're gonna use the command for sweep one rail. You're gonna have a rail cross section here, cross section here, and then you will create this surface. Now we also need to have this surface uh, to be closed so we can have a ring there. So now we have a reference here for making it taper from the top to the bottom. In this case, we also need a surface for the reference. So we are going to creating a surface and going to snapping right here and we're gonna make sure that the uh, smart track is on. I'm going to snap in here and here and to create this surface right there. All right, let's go ahead to take a look on the top view and make sure it cover the whole thing. Okay, you can move around, make sure it's right in the middle. Uh, if you want to, the way you're going to do it is you pick up the surface, both of the surface, and you're going to use the align tool and align horizontal. So that way it will be right in the center. All right, so now we have something like this. We are going to using the command that's called flow along surface. 
So remember the one, the first one we use a flow command is only flow along curve. This time we want to use flow along surface. So this will be the object and this will be one of the age and we're going to click it um, close to the target age right there. Okay, so now what you see is now it is tapered down. Uh, it will be stretched for sure, but at least you don't have to do all the calculating and try to uh, do in a sweep. Now, if we want to change in the shape a little bit, for example, I'm going to move it on the side. Both on the top and the bottom, I would like to make them a little bit kind of a caving, for example. So I'm going to rebuild this curve and we want a curve um, to be four point and in the degree three and let's click OK. So now we can edit those points. Instead of a control point, I'm going to turn on the edit point and then we are going to edit like this guy going to go up like this. This guy going to go down like this. All right. And then notice that it's still it is off where my line is I need to move it back there so I won't change my ring size and then I'm gonna moving this one down all right so again we are going to use the same method let's go ahead to creating the surface we want to use the sweep one rail this is a rail this is the cross section one and two and you remember to close the sweep right the next things we want to do is flow along surface and we're gonna Pick up the object that we have, pick up the surface and the target surface. All right, so now we will have three different kind of a ring that you got this one for flat, this one for taper, and this one not only taper, it's also caving. I hope you like this video. Let me know how you like it. Leave the comment and like the video. Check out my course for intro to intermediate. If you do want to learn how to do the jewelry design with Rhino, I highly recommend you check out the course. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.